Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotac, and today Apple released iOS 26.2 RC, or Release Candidate. The Release Candidate is the final version released to developers and public beta testers that's released to the public if there's no additional issues. If there are additional issues, we'll see iOS 26.2 RC2 in the future. But either way, this should be the final build, or very close to it. And this came in at 8.52 gigabytes on the iPhone 17 Pro Max and was about the same size on all the other devices here as anytime you go from a beta to an RC or final version, it reinstalls everything and the same is true when you go back from a public version to a beta. Now, as far as other releases, Apple also released iPadOS 26.2 RC, macOS 26.2 RC, tvOS and HomePod OS 26.2 RC, watchOS 26.2 RC, and visionOS 26.2 RC. There's also RC versions of iOS 18.7.3 and iPadOS 18.7.3 as well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go down to general, then about. As you can see, the build is 23C52. If there's no additional issues, this will be the final build released to the public. However, lately we've been having a new build once it releases. So we could see that, we might not. We don't know as Apple doesn't tell us, but either way, we can expect some sort of new build probably between now and when they release it to the public. As far as a modem update, there is no modem update coming from beta three to this version. And as far as new features, well, there's quite a few new features in iOS 26.2 as a whole going from beta three to the RC. There's a change here with focus modes. For example, if we go into do not disturb and we switch it over to sleep, it's actually a little bit different. So with beta three on the left, RC on the right, and you'll see it says sleep and it's now purple instead of this teal color. So they've just changed the overall color for it. It's not a huge change, but it is something different. Like I mentioned, iOS 26.2 has quite a few new feature updates. One of those has to do with reminders. If we go into reminders, you'll see that we now have an option in a new reminder to set it for urgent and then set an alarm to go along with that. We can have an alarm when the actual reminder is due based on a date and time, as well as repeat the alarm like you could any other alarm. So that's something that's new with an urgent request there. We also have major updates to liquid glass. If we go to the lock screen here, we'll get rid of these, press and hold, go to customize, tap on the clock. We can now customize the overall opacity and make it more transparent, just like glass, or make it more of a frosted glass. So it's up to you. You can customize this however you'd like. So you have a slider not only for size and thickness, as far as the type goes, but you can also change the translucency in general. So that's a new update with liquid glass. There's also animation updates throughout. For example, if we go into maybe podcasts here, and then maybe we go into something else, they've toned down some of the HDR effect, but if we go into the menu here, you'll see it sort of pops out. Let me switch over to light mode, so maybe you can see that better, and it sort of pops out and emerges out like it does, more like what they showed off at WWDC with iOS 26. So there's that new animation that's found throughout. The same is true with folders where we have left justification of the title name, lots of changes throughout just like that. If we go into the measure app and go to the level, again, we have liquid glass. You'll see it has refractions and looks really nice. And then if we change it to the side here, you can see the way it works. It's just a little bit different, but they changed the overall legibility of it again. It's super easy to read and it's not being refracted very much unless you're right there at the curve of these bubbles. So overall it has this new look to it. If we go into our messages settings, unfortunately so far there's nothing to do with RCS encryption. You can see RCS messaging, but it doesn't mention anything about encryption. However, technically it should have encryption. So maybe we'll see this when it releases to the public, maybe they'll make an announcement, but so far we're not seeing any setting for it. There's also a new update to AirDrop. So under your AirDrop settings, if we switch it on an unknown iPad to everyone for 10 minutes, and then on our iPhone, we go to maybe AirDrop to someone. So you'll see here, we'll, we'll AirDrop. It recognizes the iPad. We'll try an AirDrop, but now it says use AirDrop code. So it says share a secure code with people not in your contacts to use AirDrop. You'll be able to find each other for the next 30 days. You can manage access in settings. So it says get a code. You can get this code here, enter it on the iPhone, and then you'll actually be paired for a little while. So that's something new and makes it more secure, but allows you to send between devices over a longer period of time if you want it. Also, I can confirm the AirDrop now still works on pixels. So you'll see we have a Pixel 10 Pro here. So again, if we try and AirDrop the actual wallpaper that we have, and this is from Artemis Prime again, linked in the description, but you can see here, it says ready to receive. I can send it over to the Pixel. We can accept. 
and it works. So this is something that pixel updated and you'll see it still works even with the RC. So I don't know that Apple will be able to disable it, but it does still work with this update. Now, one of the major features in iOS 26.2, or rather iPadOS 26.2, is the inclusion of split view and slide over again. If we go into our settings, go down to multitasking and gestures, switch over to windowed apps, we can now use slide over, like you can see here. So we'll press and hold, and you'll see it says exit slide over. If we bring in another app here, maybe Safari, you'll see with Safari, like I mentioned, we have slide over and split view. So if we throw this to the side there, we can bring that out. We'll bring this one out of slide over. And then again, we can slide it over here and now we have split view as well. So just like we had before, but you have to use it in your windowed apps or your stage manager. It doesn't work in full screen apps. There's quite a few other updates in iOS 26.2. We'll cover in the final video step by step, but basically we have things such as sleep score updates and health where they've changed that. There's also flash for alerts included for the display now. So what that means is instead of just flashing the flash with an alert, under accessibility, you can now enable that. So if we scroll down here under audio and visual with an accessibility, we can go to the bottom and flash for alerts and we have the option for screen or both now. So you can enable that. We also have updates in Apple music where we can now have lyrics offline. We have updates to the podcast app. We also have updates to Freeform, adding table support. Settings have been updated for safety alerts. Stocks get some updates. Third-party app stores should now be allowed in Japan with the update. Japan should also be able to change the actual button on the side to activate a different assistant other than Siri. There's updates to the games app. Messages has changes for sending messages with MMS and RCS. Also, we have focus modes that show options for home screen editing, and there's keyboard updates as far as correcting the way it looks on the home screen. So all of those things are new. There's also some new things in the code as well. And thanks to Aaron P613 on X, he says new in iOS 26.2 RC, a feature with the code word grape that is related to find my no additional details on what this is for. It could be an air tag too. So we don't know what it is, but of course, Apple's always working on new products and features. As far as other features worth mentioning or updates, Apple now pushed out the replay your music story here. So that's for 2025. So you can see all of your different updates as far as your year in music, your top artists and more. Now to go along with all the other releases, Apple actually released some features today in different parts of the world. For example, the hypertension notifications from Apple Watch are now available in more countries as of today. Apple added it to the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, and Vietnam. Sleep apnea notifications are now available in Colombia, and the hearing test and hearing aid updates, if you're using AirPods, are now available in Bahrain, Costa Rica, and Paraguay. Also automatic conversation boost expanded to a few different countries in Europe with the UK, Austria, Germany, Poland, Switzerland, Finland, Norway, Denmark, and Ireland. So all of those are available now. When it comes to bugs and bug fixes, well, one thing I'm happy to report is that Apple actually responded to some of the feedback and the app library lag is now fixed as of beta three, but they confirmed it. So if you go and tap an app library, sometimes it was a bit laggy, but there is still some issues. For example, if you go into the control center and scroll, some people see a lot of lag. Now this is mostly on older devices, older than the 17 series phones rather. And if we scroll back and forth, there's no lag. It seems like the widget lag is completely gone and scrolling between things is gone as well. And it's overall fairly smooth, but that lag is still there. I've also seen additional bugs with CarPlay using it wirelessly again, where it just disconnects or resets and doesn't work properly. It seems to work fine for me right now, but there are still some issues with that. And there's some new issues with CarPlay I didn't mention where you can unpin the contacts or not view those. And also you have widget stacks as well. When it comes to the wallpaper bug, you can see the vibrant wallpaper here, scroll home, it slightly desaturates. So it's ever so slight, but it looks like it's much better than it was before. So definitely still there. As far as Apple's release notes, they have those public facing now. So you'll see if we scroll down, we have iOS 26.2 RC and under the notes, there's a few new things. So they've resolved issues with airdrop. It says devices set to everyone on iOS 26.2 beta one are not discoverable by devices on 26.2 beta two. They've since fixed this. There's quite a few known issues with declared, declared age range APIs. And then also if we go down to health kit, there's a new feature here with hypertension notifications are now available again with a new API. They've resolved issues with instruments. 
There's resolved issues with permission kit APIs, as well as store kit features have been updated and resolved as well. And then we have a few other things resolved, such as watch face gallery, where they fixed the watch face gallery only being in English. So all of those things have been updated and there's still some known issues, but maybe they'll resolve it before it's released to the public. As far as other releases, well, at this point, I wouldn't expect an iOS 26.1.1, but iOS 26.2 RC could release sometime next week, or we could have the public release as soon as Monday. It just depends on if we have issues, but based on previous releases, we've had the RC2 at least the following week before. So we'll have to wait and see what they do there, but either way, I would expect the public release either by the 8th or the 15th. Then we'll move on to iOS 26.3 beta 1, probably a day after, maybe the 16th or the 9th, and then that will be the last beta until the new year. Typically we'll have a new beta, maybe the first or second week of January. So maybe the fifth or sixth or the 12th or 13th. Typically it's in the fifth or sixth time range though. So that's when we can expect the next updates. And of course, iOS 26.4 is expected probably in March to release to the public. And that's when we expect the new Apple intelligence Siri update. So that will be Siri 2.0 where everyone's waiting for that. So if you're wondering if you should install iOS 26.2 RC, well, so far, if you're on 26.2, any of the betas, definitely install it, provide feedback. But if you want to try it out and you're on 26.1, now would be the time. But just keep in mind, it's not necessarily final until Apple releases it to the public. So there could be some bugs. Just make sure you have a backup and know that you can only downgrade if you're using a computer. So there's no other way to downgrade there. As far as the performance, well, on the 17 Pro Max, it's exceptionally smooth so far. So everything from ProMotion to scrolling, going through different apps, going in and out here, just going back and forth and going into podcasts, it's generally very smooth, much more so than it was before. So it seems good. We'll have to see how it does over the next few days, and we'll talk about it in the weekend follow-up video. As far as overall heat, well, it stayed nice and cool, even so much so that I ran Geekbench three times and it stayed fairly cool. So maybe they've made some changes there, but again, we'll have to evaluate this over the next few days and see how it does. When it comes to battery life, let's go ahead and take a look at that. So if we take a look at battery, battery health, you'll see I'm at 100% capacity with 23 cycles currently, and you'll see the overall battery usage Yesterday was four hours and 23 minutes of screen active time at two hours and 26 minutes of screen idle time. And I use 69% of the battery today, three hours and 21 minutes of screen active time. And I use 51%, but we're down to 65 currently. So we'll have to see how it is over the next few days. See if it improves generally with 26.2. It's been pretty good for most people. When it comes to overall storage, again, let's check that between beta three and the RC. So we'll go back here. Now that it's loaded, we'll scroll to the bottom and you'll see we're taking up pretty much basically what we had before. My iPhone has a little bit more from Apple intelligence. So 20.55 gigabytes compared to 23.01. And mostly that's 9.07 gigabytes on Apple intelligence compared to 6.62. So maybe I ran a few different models in here or something like that. System data is going up and down as you would expect. It can vary greatly, so I would really ignore this unless it's taking up so much storage that you can't install updates. Now, like I said, I ran benchmarks three different times and here are the three different results. So if we take a look at the history, you'll see the best result was the last time I ran it with 3,823 for single core, 9,893 for multi-core. I would expect this to be over 10,000 after it's done processing in the background. So overall, what we'd expect, definitely very good overall. And so that's everything with iOS 26.2 RC so far. Of course, if I find more features and changes, I'll be sure to share them with you in the weekend follow-up video. So be sure to check back for that along with battery life and much more. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I mentioned earlier. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.